Welcome back to another 10 questions with Jamie. Uh, as you all have been following along, uh, we're into uh, round two. Um, I hope you enjoyed round one uh, as much as we did uh, bringing it to you guys. Uh, but as we continue on, uh, you'll recognize this next guest, uh, Paul Cowie. Uh, thank you again uh, for joining us for round two, Paul. My pleasure, Jamie. Yeah. Well, uh, as many of you viewers know, Paul was with us the first round. Uh, we had a great time doing it. And um, as you, again, all you, everyone knows that, you know, at the end of the 10 questions, uh, we get to know someone's spiritual journey just a little bit more. Uh, with round two, uh, we're getting a little bit deeper and trying to know the individual just a little bit more. So uh, by the end of this, uh, we're going to know Paul just, just a little bit more, uh, his journey and, and where he's at. So uh, again, thanks for joining us. And Paul, um, as we start here, uh, can you uh, tell the group, um, when did you feel your Christian journey started? Uh, it started on February 17th, 1996, and I call that my spiritual birthday. Awesome, awesome. Uh, that's great that you have the date and everything. Uh, anything particular for that uh, time that, that, was, that happened that obviously you knew the date and everything? Was there something that you did that uh, started this journey of yours? That, that'll fall into question too, Jamie. Perfect. When and where did you meet Jesus, Bob? Um, a lot led up to that moment in time. Uh, uh, some folks have been praying for me and, uh, and fasting for me. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, it started, I was down playing darts at the Legion in Perth. Mm -hmm. And I uh, got kind of a feeling inside that uh, I needed to be right with the Lord. And uh, so I ended up... Uh, telling the lads around me, look, you're never going to see me like this again. We were kind of enjoying ourselves a little bit like you do down at the Legion. Right. And they kind of laughed at me. And uh, uh, soon after, I went home and had a chat with Rose, who had already uh, had faith in, in, in Jesus. And, uh, and from that, I, uh, I started my process uh, of, uh, of, uh, of accepting what Christ did on the cross. And uh, asking for forgiveness of sins and, uh, and inviting me into my life and, and things have never been the same. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um, that's great that you can share that with us. And it's great that, um, um, you know, you have the date and the year, everything right down and, um, you knew what you were doing. And, um, it's, it's wonderful that, um, that we can, you know, we know right to that very point, what turned us around and, and sent us, um, of course, grace. So that's awesome. Um, Paul, in your opinion, uh, what is the most memorable event of your Christian journey? Okay, um, you'd think it'd be that moment back in February of 96, but uh, I chose, uh, I had an <clears throat> emotional collapse in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, Rose and I had just moved into a new house. Uh, I had a lot of responsibility doing year-end work at Lannert Mutual. I had the worst cold of my entire life. I uh, needed a steroid to work with it. Yeah. And uh, I hadn't slept because of all that. I hadn't slept in nine days. So I had a, an emotional breakdown, a collapse, I had yeah. panic attacks and the full blown everything. Mm -hmm. So I was, uh, I, I basically, uh, only way I could cope was to go out to the car or outside. And I just, Asked the Lord to get me through it and 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 uh, to help me, mm -hmm. and and I had to do it often and frequent through the day just to cope, yeah. and that lasted for uh, about four weeks. But I've never felt so close to the Lord as that time where He was, uh, He literally lifted me up and and uh, enabled me to to heal emotionally and uh, and and maybe stronger since then. Yeah, yeah. and you know it's. Uh... It's wonderful when you look back at that in those troublesome times and the hardships in our lives. And, you know, while we're in it, it's very difficult sometimes to, to think of anything but that, you know, the particular hardship. Uh, but looking back and seeing the Lord work within, within us and us with the Lord and leaning on the Lord. And, um, you know, it's obvious that he, he carried us through that hardship, right? And um, it, it, was a, it was a double-edged sword. It was, a, it was one of the most difficult times in my life, but it was one of the most beautiful. Yeah, yeah, amen to that. Yeah, now for sure. Um, well, Paul, can you share um, a time in your life? Um, actually, sorry. What do you find is one of the most difficult things to do in your Christian journey? 
Well, I'm getting old, Jamie, uh, but believe it or not, I still got lots of energy. Yeah. And uh, with that is not standing still. So the thing I find uh, uh, difficult is uh, listening in silence to God. Mm -hmm. So I sit there in a chair. I try to, I, I, I practice it, but I, I, I spend time trying to listen and, and just to sit quietly and to uh, remove those temptations in your mind to think about other things or uh, to get up and walk around or distractions around you. So I find uh, listening in silence very difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it's very common, uh, you know, I've run into the Q&A and some similar, very, very similar answers. And, you know, our, our life, our world, our society is very hustle and bustle. Go, go, go. Right. And uh, like you said, just finding the time for that silence can be difficult and then utilizing it. Uh, so I'm with you there. I totally get that. Yeah. Um, Paul, now I started the question uh, before the last one here. Can, can you share a time in your life when you you felt the Holy Spirit working in your life? OK, when you when you first come to know the Lord and for to be honest with you, for years after, that's a, that's a long journey. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of uh, biblical knowledge and you discern the events of the world around you and people around you and things. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Holy Spirit has been working a lot. To one point, I remember uh, uh, moving from a bit of a legalistic uh, mindset of uh, having the knowledge. And now what do I do with that knowledge uh, afterwards? Do I... Uh, uh, do I use it for something really good and beautiful and positive, or do I use it to be judgmental? Mm -hmm. So I've moved from uh, that mindset over time at, through the Holy Spirit, leading me to a, a mindset of uh, loving and showing much grace with that knowledge and instead of uh, acting like I'm God sometimes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah, that's so, great. Um, that's a that's a continual thing with the Holy Spirit. Uh, of course, yeah, hell yeah, and um, and you know our idea is just to try to be as consistent as possible with it, right? So, yeah. Now, this is a question I'm particularly interested in uh, from from our guests, and and that is in a conversation with someone who has never heard about God. What would you say about God from your experience? Okay, so they've never heard of God or know little. Um, I, I tend to want to bring out the attributes of God. Mm -hmm. So I would start with love because God is all about love. He's full of love and, uh, and he's desperate. He wants a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and ultimately in sending Jesus to the cross, the ultimate gift of love. Mm -hmm. um, he's willing to forget whatever we've or forgive whatever we've done. Um, that's an important thing that some folks think they've gone too far and God will never forgive me. Uh, there is no too far if you come to him with a, a sincere heart and God's very forgiving. Um, he brings comfort. So uh, when I'm scared or lost in my life, uh, I find a lot of comfort in, in God, uh, in praying and, and he, uh, a peace sweeps across me. Um, and mostly, I guess, uh, trusting and dependable too. Uh, um, very few people in our life do we share things uh, 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 that are very personal. And, and with God, there is no gossip. Uh, you can pour your heart out to him and, uh, and he's dependable, uh, available 24 seven, unlike uh, uh, folks you depend on and, and very trusting to, to keep it there. Yeah. without condemning me yeah 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 excellent excellent um uh, description really and uh for sure um you know the the excitement of, of explaining that to somebody would be neat in itself but you know just relaying our journeys to one another uh, especially those that haven't really got um a lot of examples in their life you know is is awesome and, and for just the many reasons you suggested so excellent yeah um, here's another good one, uh, designed for Paul Cowie here. Uh, what is one of your greatest strengths and one of your greatest weaknesses in your Christian journey? 
Okay. It's funny. I got a lot of weaknesses, but uh, <laughs> we I'll see if I can one. find a strength in here, <laughs> Jamie. Um, the strength, I, I, I care about people. Uh, that can manifest itself in many ways. Um, things you, you might see uh, where I maybe go out to coffee with somebody I think could use it, or uh, maybe they just need some help with something, or there's other ways you can care about people that they don't see. Uh, one is uh, one is praying for folks. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, it might be somebody just on the street you see who's struggling to walk. Maybe you say a quick prayer to God or, or somebody who uh, uh, doesn't know you're praying for them within the church family, but you care. You care yeah. about what's going on. You pay attention. You invest in people. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's other ways you can do things that they don't see either that you show you care. And we'll just leave that at that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, weaknesses, we're trying to keep this under 15 minutes, uh, yeah. Jamie or so, so I'm, I'm not going to go off the handle here. Uh, one of the weaknesses is patience. Yeah, I, uh, with a lot of energy, uh, <laughs> comes a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'd say uh, whether it's in traffic, I watched CJOH News here earlier and uh, I need a lot of patience with politicians or things I, I see uh, uh, folks doing in the news that goes against maybe my, my uh, biblical viewpoint. Right. Um, lineups in grocery stores. So I, I'm full of a bit of baggage, Jamie. So that's one of my weaknesses. So that's the only one I'm going to tell you today. Yeah, no, that's good. And, uh, you know, I, I can, uh, without going too far into it on myself, I can totally relate with the patience thing. Um, so uh, you have, you you have a sympathetic ear on that one. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, what would you find, um, the hardest part of being a Christian today? Paul? Um, I, there's a lot. Um, I would say trying to have conversations about faith with people, whether they're my friends, whether they're uh, a random person, I, I, I might just meet at Tim Hortons or up street or something and we decide to chat I I can be kind of a chatty person right. um your friends will respect you enough to allow you to to, to talk a little bit and it, it's not like you're uh, some folks have a wonderful gift of standing on a street corner that may be not me but uh yeah. um you know you, you you get into faith and and folks uh, the world offers so many different answers uh, to it so um it's it's uh it's hard to have those conversations you have some yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. uh that that can be very challenging yeah yeah, yeah. yeah I, I agree um <clears throat> um here's um another interesting um question that i'm interested in hearing all the all the answers from my, my guests but this one in particular um when or where are you most likely to be aware of God's presence. Okay. Um, I'm most aware when I'm having conversations with people or looking at the circumstances unfolding before me, whether I'm up street or at home. Um, I look for God at work around me and I join in. Mm -hmm. So uh, I wait for a bit of a prompting of the Holy Spirit. I can't be everything to everybody. Right. Uh, but I, I uh, watch for God at work, and there's so many different ways uh, that uh, God will speak to me uh, uh, to, to see what's going on around him and, and just to just simply join in. It can be a lot of ways, uh, uh, an encouraging card when you hear somebody uh, um, sick or, or uh, a phone call, or, or it could be a lot of ways somebody you don't even know might might need an encouraging word or something there's so many ways it can it can come up but it starts with the lord and uh and i'm just watching for to see what he's doing around me and uh man it's go daddy time yeah and, and you're one to to get out in the community and uh you know spend time on the street like walking up and down and doing a lot of uh stuff like that where you're interacting with society too which is perfect for your gift and um, you know, again, if you feel the presence of the Lord, you're right in it, right? In the community, so that's good. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, right, our last question, Paul, and I have to be honest with you, it's probably one of the most exciting questions um, that I've, been, again, anticipating many wonderful answers. It is, I think, more of a hypothetical question, 
but it's you know it's it's fun one uh, nonetheless, and, and that's when you get to heaven, Paul, and you had the opportunity to ask God one question. What would that question? Be? Okay, I hope my answer is not disappointing. I I thought about it and I got thinking. Here I'm going to transition from this dirty old flesh, mm -hmm. and I'm moving into heaven in a I think a glorified body. Yeah. I, I think I'll, I'll give you an answer at the end, but I, I think uh, I think I'm just going to be standing in awe looking at the Lord. And I don't think any of those things back on earth that I've maybe thought about here now that I want to ask him yeah. uh, matter. Yeah. But just to give you an answer to the question, and it's not an exciting answer, but it means a lot to me. I, I might want to know where my mom and my dad are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, there's going to be a wide range. Of, and that's why I like this question, because, you know, to be honest with you, there, we probably won't have any questions, but, you know, we're going to have fun with it. And there's going to be so many uh, diverse answers from the group. And well, you could have come so, up with a, a big theological uh, question about why, uh, you know, how do the birds uh, yeah. uh, know to go, go uh, south in the in you know in the fall or whatever but mm -hmm. i just think we'll be standing in the awe of the lord and i i don't see me having it i know you're looking for one so i yeah, you know it'd yeah. be kind of cool to make sure mom and dad were up there yeah yeah i believe oh, they no, were, yeah. but i yeah. just thought it'd be cool i think there'd be many people uh you know similar you know we're some loved ones right but uh no that's good and, and it's fun to do it um it's fun to do the questions with everybody paul i, I had a great time doing it with you today um, I hope you had a, you enjoyed your time uh, with me today as well. Um, oh, for sure, for sure. Awesome. And viewers, I hope, uh, again, you enjoyed the show um, as, as we have done it many times before. We continue to do it as long as there's people here. Um, so, again, uh, to my guest today, Paul Cowie, thank you for taking time with me. And to all the viewers out there uh, that took time to watch the video today and support it, uh, wonderful thank you. We're glad you're out there. Uh, we love doing it. And uh, keep coming back. Well, as long as there's people, we'll give you some content. Uh, until next time, God bless everybody. God bless.